Oh, winter's on its way. Let's get these mowers done today. Uh, just pick that up. That's kind of cool. What do you think of that? 1930s. But today, we're doing the Frenchie today. That's the one to get done. The parts came in just yesterday. Once I can figure out which way around this key goes. Okay. So let's get in the shed. Let's try and get this French lawn mower up and running. Once I turn my alarm off. Two ticks. Hello, I'm Mixed Mowers and Mower Man and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing part two on the video on the feeder lawn mower, which is the lawn mower that belongs to my friend Paul at work. He was bought this lawnmower from a friend of his um, for his 40th birthday. Um, however, his friend, I'm led to believe, has got a terminal illness and the outlook is quite bleak for him. So Paul gave me a lawnmower and um, said, can you get it up and running? Because it, it's got a bit of sentimental value. I said, I'll have a look at it for you. And hopefully we can get it up and running. So the engine does run, but the, um, the whole rear assembly uh, on the roller has all collapsed and broken. I have since found a website um, which supplies the parts, and that's in France, in a place called Lyon. And uh, I have purchased parts and uh, they just turned up today. So I said to Paul, I'll get onto it straight away and we'll go from there. So in today's video, we're going to be bringing the lawnmower back in and uh, trying to refit all the roller assembly and changing the variable um, cable because that's actually broken. So that'll be done as well. And by the end of this video, this um, lawnmower should have it all up and running. I'm giving back to Paul and he'll be as happy as Larry. If this is your first time you're watching Mixed Mother Mower Man, hit the old subscribe button, whack the old bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told next time I upload another video. So without further ado, let's get down dirty and let's get this feeder up onto a bench, get the rear roller put back in and a cable and hopefully we'll be good as gold. Okay, so in this video, as I say, I've got the parts has come in. Now the, the, the bits and pieces I put into the Evapo rust, uh, they come out really, really well actually. Um, so that's the rear sprocket. And then I've got the, uh, the chain. Now if you remember right, the chain was absolutely solid. And I mean solid, solid as a rock. It was absolutely jammed, uh, rusty and all the rest of it. And uh, it's been in Evapo rust for about two or three days, purely because I forgot about it. Um, but as you can see now, Look at that chain, baby, which is all good. So there's a few little tiny um, links that I just, just, just need to work on. But once the lawnmower's running, it, it will free itself up. But now the, the chain is so, is so much more better. It wasn't doing anything at all. So that evapor rust is good gear, man. Uh, just wants a few links, there's one there. Just wants, just wants bending in the vice, just to get it, get it moving again. And once it's moving, it's still going in now, uh, it, it, will, it will start to start to do its job. So it's, just once you break the seal, you can see it then it then will start to move and the chain doesn't need to be renewed so there's nothing wrong with this chain it's just it's just lack of use so that's good that's been sat in oil i'm going to work on that a bit later on um but the main part of the mower is actually going to be oh, uh the parts uh that uh, i've ordered that's a bit of a weird setup to be fair um it's not it's not probably the best setup i've come across in my, in my days of doing lawnmower mower repair but um it's a thing. So you have to order the roller. Now I thought I had to order two rollers because it comes in two parts, but actually it comes in, it, these two bits is, is classified as one part. And then you get all your bits and your bobs that go with it. I've got cable as well. Uh, the total bill for that was £77.80. Um, and that's with a, sh a company called Buy and Drop, um, Mo Direct is their, um, their company, and they're actually in the UK, but the, the actual main depot to this is actually in France, which is where the, the parts are stored. So I've got a new rear roll assembly and a new um, speed cable, so that, that's the variator cable. Um, the cable was uh, 15 pound plus of that, and um, the roller was around about ne nearly 50 quid uh, plus of that. So um, it's gonna it's cost around about 77 pound all in. And the, the rear roller, it is a bit of a weird one, I'm gonna admit it. And you can sort of see why it might have failed um, because the, the two ends of the roller are actually designed to rub against each other. So they just, they've got little tiny teeth on here, or grooves for a better word, 
and you just turn it to it until it finds its place and it just slots in. And then these two rollers, because it's split, they will actually rub. And eventually those two ends do just rub and just wear themselves out. That's what's actually what's happened. So um, with the rear roller, uh, just in case, for, in, in case you want to order uh, a rear roller, it actually comes with multiple parts to it. So don't go all the parts up separately because you get double charged. So it actually comes with a, the bearing housing, the main bearing housing, which goes on the back of the, um, the roller up against the engine and the chassis goes in there. It comes with that. And that also comes with its own set of roller um, uh, needle bearing that goes in there. A little tiny oil seal and then two metal spacers. So they, they come with the kit. I've got two, two bags of those. Uh, there, there's a cable and there's a bit there so don't order up all, all the spaces it comes it comes with the kit okay guys so let me clear the decks down and then um i've got all these spare bits and bobs in the box and then hopefully today we'll have them up on the top we'll get the roller fitted and we'll be good to go but before we get on i have actually had a little parcel turned up um i've ordered what's this i've battered some bricks and stratton gaskets and diaphragms i ordered yet that's that but the make conquer the plonker he sent me some swabs, which um, he used for cleaning um, needle seats, and he sent me this bolt, which uh, I needed to go onto my um, hater puller. Now, I've got two, only because I broke my, I broke my first one. Where's my hater puller? Here it is. Uh, somewhere in here. Um, oh. Where's that gone? They normally live in here. There it is. So um, I've got a hater puller. Uh, but the bloke sent me a bolt with it, and um, one in one was chamfered down, one wasn't. He just sent just sent a spare bolt. Pardon me, but these are actually just for removing the friction discs off of um, uh, Hater Forty Ones, Forty Eights, and Fifty Sixes. Uh, the big friction disc you can't you can't pull them off with a normal puller. So there's actually a, a Hater puller for this, um, which you can buy on eBay. They're about twenty odd quid. Uh, but I've used mine several. I actually broke my bolt on mine and snapped it right off because the, the friction disc was right on there, proper. Um, so I actually broke mine, and the bloke, um, I bought another um, puller off of him because he wouldn't sell just the bolt separately. But then he gave me a free bolt as well. Uh, I don't know. Oh, that's what that's all about. So let's just take this bolt off. Um, I don't know if this is actually bent a little tiny bit because it's got a little bit of resistance in there. Um, but this is from my mate Conker. He actually laid this out. So let me just uh, get this bolt all the way out. Oh, that is a bit stiff in there. I don't know if I actually damaged that when I uh, broke the bolt inside the housing. There it comes, it's coming there. But my mate Conker, he actually found a high tensile bolt. I don't know if these actually are high tensile on these ones, are they? Uh, no, so these are not high tensile, these ones, the ones that the bloke actually uses. But Conker did a found a high tensile bolt for me and um, laved it out. So hopefully now that one, that will fit in there, just a yummy. Look at that, that's made it go in there, isn't it? And because it's now thin enough to go up inside the crankshaft, um, I'm gonna have no problems with um, with uh, taking off my friction disc. I'm also just winding in with a ratchet or something just to, just to run it through. There you go, it's gone. So there you go, so thank you very much indeed, my top mate, top conker. For sending me my um, hater puller bolt. I should keep my spare one just in case I break another one. But there you go. Right, let's get on with this mower. Okay, so now we've got the uh, the roller and the mower. I've got the mower in the shed, but we haven't got to put it all together. So we've got, we've got a few bits to do yet. So here's our roller. I'm going to get the bits and the bobs that go with it. Be one, one lot, which would be that one there like that and what we want to do is um these oh, these ends of the, these actually the middles they just sit on there like that once they go in sit in there like that but that's got to have a little tiny spacer put in there first they've got look they come a little tiny spacer here look which is a solid spacer that's just got to be pressed in there. Now you don't want to go, go billio. You can literally just put that in by hand, but what I'm going to do, that wants to go quite away in there, I'd say. I'm just going to press that in there with a socket and a vise, but go a bit careful because it is plastic, but there is a bit of distance to be made up. So that goes in there quite a fair old way, I would say. Um, 
I might just risk it for a biscuit and take it back out and just see exactly how far that, that is supposed to go. Because it's looking flush, it looks lovely, but there's quite a bit of distance from, from one end to the other. And I don't know if that goes all the way in. It doesn't feel like it wants to. I might just nip that, nip that back out again and just see if there's a secondary sort of lip. Now I'm sort of working blind here. I've not worked on one of these before, so you have to sort of forgive me a little bit. Let me just try and fish that spacer back out without damaging anything. This is a brand new roll. I don't want to be damaging nothing. Oh, there it goes. I've right, dropped the part. Okay, so, so there is a secondary lip. So a few information, you don't, it doesn't go all the way in. There's another little lip just there. So that spacer just literally just sits down, get a bit of a tap, just to send that home. A little love tap, that's it. And then there's one on the other side on that one there. And then the idea is, I think, is that those are supposed to fish together to stop stop it from uh, from wearing, but eventually that, that, that will wear. So, so that's that. So the two rollers are now sort of complete happy with that it doesn't say which way round they go and then you've got these parts here it's like a little tiny all seal on the um on the small side and the roller bearing on the inside so you've got new parts here so we're going to use all of these so there's the all seal that's gone in already i want to push it in just with a, with a, um, a vice as well and just want to squeeze these in the vice too just so that roller bearing sits in there lovely and then that piece then will then be pushed and pressed into the roller just like so. So let me get the roller bearing installed and I'll come back to you in two ticks. Okay, this is where we are. I've now pushed in, pressed into the brand new um, roller bearing. So they were pressed in from the longer, the longer end. So roller bearings have been pressed in and just below surface level. And then all seal on the other side, which is now here. And then you've got to, I'm afraid to say, you've got to whack that. Um, You've got to put that piece uh, fat side down or widest part down, like so, and then you've got to hit that with a soft blow hammer uh, all the way in so these sit flush. Once they're in, then you're good to go, and then you've got to put those on on both of these, and then we can then start to assemble uh, the shaft. Right, so before we get too far ahead of ourselves, um, I want to put a little tiny bit of grease um, in the roller but in the roller needles or roller bearings so they've got to be greased up with high temperature grease and then i want to lube up my shaft uh, that's been in the vapo rust that's so nice and clean so i want to lube that up and take any burrs out and then we can start to um put this together so all we're going to do literally is just going to lube it up as i say and then put the two um points of the roller together and then put the shaft all the way through so i'm going to do so let me get that done i'll be back to you once i've lubed up my shaft Okay, so this is where we're at. Um, I, greased me, I greased my shaft, uh, put that through the main roller, all the way through, and uh, just put the two little tiny spacers on the end of here, one, one on each end. Uh, that's as far as I go. This end here, the one with a hole in uh, for the 10 mil nut, that's the one that this gear cog, wherever it's gone, it's probably on the floor, I expect, because I've been banging stuff about. Uh, there's a, the big gear cog, which is over here. There it is. Uh, <laughs> The big gear cog sits on this one here, which will go on the height adjustment side. If you get a bit confused, this actually go on the height adjustment side, where the height lever is. Um, not on this side, but um, where, we, where in the UK we have the gearboxes over on the left-hand side as you're facing the back of a lawnmower. So this actually go on the height adjustment lever side. That's where that goes on there, like that. So let me get the lawnmower back on top now. And I think we're nearly ready to start fitting this roller into place. And then we should go from there. Okay, before we go any further, I will be taking off this cable, this end here as well, because I'll need to re uh, replace it with a new variator cable. I need to undo this as well to uh, make this move. So I'm gonna have a quick look at that first. So it's a sort of a two in one video really, guys. You're getting twice as much, twice as much for your buck. Um, Cause I don't wanna be mucking about with a, a cable uh, a bit later on. So I've got my little cable tool, I can go up into there. Yeah, that fits, God, that's tight that is. I'm gonna struggle with that. Oh, that's been splayed right open. I'm not gonna get a tool on that. See, I'm not, that's been, uh, that's been well mutilated because it's seized. I think my mate Paul's really 
given that from physic. So I just want to cut that like that. And that'll give it just give it a bit more slack then. Not really get a lot of slack on these cables by the looks of it. Uh, I want the one that goes down to variate, which I think is that one there. Yeah, that's the one there. There's my tool, my tool on there. The end of this arrow is absolutely smashed. I'm gonna to struggle to, to even get anything on that. Actually, we don't use the same sort of uh, materials as us over here in the UK by the looks of it. I want to cut these legs off of this point. That might be easier, Mick. Let me just cut one of them off. About there. That might help me out a bit. There it goes. So there's my variated cable coming out, which is completely snapped. The other ones are not brilliant, but they're in a bit better condition. So there's my variated cable. And what I'm gonna do is just gonna attach um, the variated cable uh, flat end only. So, so all it is is once I'm, we go to uh, fit it, it'll already be fitted in the gearbox end. It just sort of makes sense to me to fit that gearbox end now. And then uh, we'll be good to go. So let's just fit that now. And go through there, through there. Take the dog leg off the old one. Fit the dog leg onto that one. Cool. You can't get your hand in there, can you? Does that move yet, Mick, or not? Oh, how tight that is, look, that should move. That's not doing anything. That's why we're very out of speeds knackered. Just trying to get this dog leg in. Into the situ. Get in there. Of course, it's all upside down on this machine, isn't it? It don't muck you about. My word, my word. Okay, that's what that's in. And I'm going to just literally just slide this cable into position. So I'll do this now because I don't want to be mucking about a bit later. And that's just got to sit inside its groove. Somewhere in there. Like that. So yeah, so we use different cable ends over here. I've got to try and manipulate that out a bit more, just a touch more it wants to go. Any dirt in there or something, is there? Get a little tiny screwdriver. Just display the mains out on that on that arrow. They're just not quite um, closing up. that cable system just gonna come back out. There's one. Come on Mr. Cable. There's two. So, so you can see what I've done there. Literally just uh, fed the cable into its home, into there, pulled the little arrows out and then just hooked it up to here. It, it just saves mucking about later on. I'm gonna loosen that one off a bit later on. Give it a bit of an all up, a uh, bit of a grease up. So no, that's, that, that needs to move, and it's absolutely solid, and, that, and that's why that's why it did that. So I'll loosen it up in a bit. Let's come with this gearbox um, and roll the side of it, and then we'll go from there. Right, well, onto the roller. Like I said to you, the end with the uh, the, the hole in has got to go um, on the height adjustment handle side. So this actually goes in here like that with that little tiny 10 mil hole, like I said, um, up against the height adjustment end, which is this end over here. That's just got to slide up into there. Come on, baby. Sit itself down. Come on, baby. God, that's tight, man. That's tight. That's tight, tight. That's got him. And then you've got your little tiny end caps, circlips, and bearings. So you've got these to go on, one on each, and you've got your, um, remember your C bearings, these ones, 
with a little with a little C clip on them. They got going as well, which would be um, all that. But they, they were all free running, so they they weren't a problem. So let me just fit these back on, and if I remember rightly, they go um, with the the broader shoulder of the uh, of the bearing facing inwards. But we'll double check before I fit them back on. Right, so this is where we are at the moment. Um, I've put the bearing in and it does go with the little tiny ring. Let me find the other bearing just so I can show you. Uh, it'd be easier just to explain it. I'll show you rather than trying to explain it with, with my terminologies. Where's my spare ring gone? Bearing there is there. <clears throat> so this, this is a bearing with a little tiny circlet that goes along the outside of it, the big circlet, like, like a piston ring, yeah? Uh, it's got to go that way up so that the ring is uppermost and, the, and the, the ring is actually just inside here. That's what stops the bearing from sliding down through this housing. And then a little tiny circle then goes on top of the actual shaft, which will stop the actual, the actual shaft from going down through as well. So you have it in the order of a little tiny circle to stop the shaft and then the, um, the main bearing with the um, big C-clip on the outside and then this little tiny um two 10 mil plate so i'll take that off very quickly you better see i could rather you guys see because i don't see any videos of these online um i think i am one of the first <sighs> so you see there's there's a little c clip just there you see and that stops the bearing from slipping down through so it goes that way up there it's got a good picture of that yeah there you go and then you can sort of um you know where you're going with that now what i do is do exactly the same repeat the process to the other end of the roller um i'll tip the lawnmower up the other way uh to do that I'll find too old to put the bolt, took, put, took bolt in. There it is. Um, I'll do this end up just loosey goosey and then transfer the machine over to the other side so I can then um, do exactly the same to the other side of this one. Um, and then that will then be the roller centralized. Um, and hopefully it, 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 should, it should run a bit better. So we're getting there. Um, I'm not a fan of the design, but um, yeah, we, let's not be too critical until we get it all put back together. So we'll go from there. Okay, so um, we're getting there. So now the um, both bearings are now been fitted, both sides, um, and the little tiny circlip's got to go on each end of the shaft as well, guys and girls. Don't forget the little tiny circlip because that stops your shaft from moving in and out as well. Okay, so um, that's all now done. Just got to tighten up the the ten mils either side of his plate. It's got to do that. I've then got to put on. Um, a little tiny gear cogs. Don't forget your big gear cog goes on the back and your little gear cog, whatever it is, there it is, goes on the front. 10 mil ten, ten mils bolts hold that on and then the chain is then fitted on top of that. So a bit of a clean up <coughs> and I'll put the gear cogs back on or sprockets or whatever you want to call it and then um, we go from there. Okay, so now the chain's back on. Um, that's all good. Um, just got to give it a good oiling as well. I might even grease it actually because um, it, it is quite dry because it's been in the evapor rust for so long. But it's all nice and all nice and loose and moving. So that'd be grease up, tidy up. What I'm now I want to do is uh, tip my back onto its side again because I want to have a look at this variated cable assembly setup because that's not moving. And until that's moving, um, we won't be able to adjust the speed of this machine. And also then I want to put the belt back on as well. Um, and then I've got not many more bits left. I've got to put the blade back on, all that sort of stuff. And then um, hopefully we can go towards a fire up. So let's get up onto its side and then at least put the belt on and look at this variator pulley system. Try and get that to move. And then hopefully we can then hook up the cable for the variator up the top end of the arm up here. Get that hooked up. And then, uh, yeah, we're three quarter, well over three quarters way there then. Okay, mower now on its side. I just want to loosen off this one else out of that 13. What is that on there? Well, it's more than that. What's that? That's a 14. It'd be about a 12, I'd say, then. Uh, I don't think it's a 10. It's too small for a 10. Yeah. be about a 12, then. 13. Right, so we'll get a 13 on there. I'll loosen that off. Um, because it's, it's just not moving full stop. Just not moving at all, so I'm gonna loosen that up a touch. There it goes. Oh my word! My word! My word! So that cable's nice and loose. So I might have to take this off of this pin somehow, or remove remove the whole entire entire thing itself just to get it to move. At the moment, it's not doing anything. 
what I might do, I might just literally uh, give out a squirt with some um, towel lube. All areas. I mean, it's got a bit of a shock treatment with a, just with a, a mallet, just on, on this end here, just to try and shock it into submission. Because it should, it should move quite freely. There you go. That's all I want you to do, it's just a bit of move. Once you get to a certain point, it will move all on its own. Well, when you, when you use a cable, of course. So now we're starting to get a bit of movement out of it. So now hopefully, yeah, that's it. Now all that was was literally just because lack of uh, lack of maintenance. That's all it was. So I'll give it a right old proper clean up. There's grass behind there, it doesn't help, see? Proper clean up, and then uh, I might hit it with some carburetor spray first, um, and some penetrating lube. Clean these little pulleys up, because you want the belt to, uh, to slide. And then um, we can then fix it to a cable on the other side of the machine on the uh, top side where the handle is. And then that way, when you operate the, uh, when you operate the handle to do your speed, uh, your, your variating speed, it should then at least uh, change, change speed as well. So a bit of cleaning, bit of lubing, um, it's just general maintenance. And then uh, hopefully that, that variator then will then do what it should do. But all I'm doing is just, just taking my grass out of the pulley because a belt will slide on that, and you know, it's just all the grass in there is just not making it, not making it run right. So plenty of towel loop. This is good stuff. This is this towel loop. It's nice and thick in all areas. Get right in behind it. More the better, and that'll really help when it goes to uh, to use a variator. So now the least of variator is now actually moving doing what it should do. And when, when we finally get it onto the cable, see how it moves back on its own, see? That's what you want. So, yeah, we're getting there. So that's okay, that now works. It will seize beforehand. I'll do that nut back up and that'll be golden. We'll put the belt back on. Um, then we'll go from there. Okay. Okay, belt's now fitted um, and it goes on like so. Don't forget, when I took before I took this off, I took photographs. So just make sure that if you come across anything else like this, take photographs of where stuff goes and that way you won't have these issues. So that's exactly how, how I found it. And um, I took photographs pre, pre all that, so that shouldn't be a problem. So now that's back on. So now what's left to do is just put all the coverings back on. Um, the belt cover and the, the blade, I'm going to sharpen and bounce the blade anyway, all that sort of good stuff. And then hopefully we can go for a test drive in a bit. So let me get all the covers put back on and just connect up the variator cable the other end. That should be no hard thing to do, about five or six screws to do that. And then hopefully we can go towards a fire up and see we haven't now saved this machine. And it now, it now should run and drive exactly as it should do. Okay, so uh, variator cable has now been fitted. Uh, that was no drama. You saw me fit it this end up the top here. There's uh, four screws, uh, one, two, three, four. This end separates, new cable goes in. That's self-explanatory. You ain't got to see a video for 20 minutes on that. <coughs> um, chains all been greased up. I've decided to use grease rather than oil um, because it's going to be hidden away for quite a while. And um, if you don't get in there and clean it, then um, the oil's just gonna dry out and be no good for nothing. So I decided against my normal routine of actually um, um, oiling chains, um, which is what I normally do. I normally always oil my chains. Uh, someone told me just to grease this one because it's, it is gonna be um, sat there and the likelihood of it, of it not being uh, treated again is, is quite high. So that's that. Now all that's left to do, I've got to do, do an oil change. I haven't done that yet. Um, I've not even tested this yet. Uh, do an oil change. Uh, new spark plug. I will check the pull cord. No doubt by doing a pull cord, you've got to take the engine off. Um, something, something silly like that, but because um, it is a 2CV French machine. And then I've just got to put all these plastic covers back on, of which I now can't remember which one, which one goes where and what goes where. Um, so I've got to figure that out. 
Uh, I've got a belt cover to go on as well, a chain cover to go on as well, both sides. So just looking at these, I think I left all, all of them the right way up. Some had a little tiny eight mil nut from what I remember. Um, so I believe these go on first, the smaller ones, and then uh, the bigger skirts go on afterwards. And I would say, there's a one there and one there. That goes on there, look. That's where that goes like that. But it's got to have this, this chain cover on first, which should be opened at the bottom, closed at the top. So I think this is the one for that one. By the looks of it. That's going to sit on there. Little tiny 10 mil there, that goes on there. That goes on there like that. So if you ever want to go the other side, they are pretty much ambidextrous apart from the one on the height adjustment side. has got a little tiny cutout just there, guys. So that, that's self-explanatory, so that's no worries. So let me get these fitted up. Little tiny 10 mil bolts, or eight, I think they might have been eight mils, I can't remember now. Or well, one was an eight, one was a 10, one or the other. And I was fighting with it when I first got them. Uh, let me get them fitted. So that one will go there. And then I'm assuming, assumption, this one here, which has got a little tiny, little tiny eight mil bolt there and a one up here, that will then go over the top of that like so. Yeah, that's it. So let me get them fitted up and then uh, I'll bring it back. I will do the oil change and what have it anyway. I might just bring it back for the pull call, we'll see how we get on, but sucking out oil is uh, no problem. What I want to do is get this machine looked at and tested, make sure it does, does actually run and drive. So that's what we're aiming for, but we shall see uh, when we go to fire it up. Right, the old We Parlez Vous Francais Ave Vec Vous RSVP is now done. Let me go and get it. I can speak French. I can speak French now, guys. Le baguette. Let me get it off the old um, off the old bench. It's all done. All changed. Spark plug. New pull cord. Blade sharp and balance. Um, oil change. Still oil change. Uh, new uh, new complete rear roller system and new um, variated cables been done. Removing the clamps. Um, so I think I can't do any more to it. I will say, whilst I'm getting off the old bench, I will say oh, it's not the easiest of machines to work on. I will say that. Um, but I'm only basing that upon other machines. Uh, the chain's all been cleaned, lubricated, de-rusted. So it's had everything, every chance I can do to repair this for my friend Paul, because he was giving this machine, as I say, via his friend for his 40th birthday. There was no petrol in it because it actually all spilled out when I was working on the machine. I'll get a bit of a clean up, a bit of a sort out. Let's put a bit in. Go. Um, so I've done it, it's, it's got everything I, I can do to get this machine up and running. The roller was not an e easy thing to do. I've had easier rollers that I've replaced on the 856s. And this was actually quite quite uh, a lot of work, but it's what it is, guys, it's what it is. So here it is, all done. Now, pull, it's for you, the old cookie. Um, so it's a feeder, and uh, the main supplier is actually in Lyon, as I say. Um, very, very similar to that Italian engine um, what's that Italian engine called? Um, Sinelli or something like that it's called. Very similar to that. Um, but it's all done. So let's now see if it'll run. If it runs, start stops. But the most important part of the whole exercise is to get this machine to drive, because it wasn't doing that. So, dead man in, choke on, no drinks for drink holder. That's speed there. Pull cord here. Off choke. For a big machine, there's no idle, which I find very hard to believe. There's no idle on it. Up, Mr. Air Filter. Don't want to play ball. Behave yourself, Mr. Air Filter. That might want a little soft tap and screw put in there. It doesn't actually idle down, it's only got one speed. Choke or it's all it's all choke or nothing. Weird. Right, so does it now drive? Yes is the answer. So it drives. It rolls back. 
backwards. Yeah. So that's good. Does the ferry out in our work. So into uh, number one, which is the lowest gear. Yeah, that's slow. In the fast. There's not a lot of difference between the two. But I'm guessing that's just what it is. Yeah, that's all right. put a grass box on it I'm pleased with it because uh, I know my mate Paul was, was really desperate to get well, he said if you can't do it you can't do it he, he, he did just, just, just accept if it can't be done it can't be done but you know I said well, I'll give it my best go mate <coughs> just gotta be careful when he bends his handles up Paulie boy he's gonna smash his cables up that goes on there there's not even a brilliant brilliant fit of a grass box there's gaps there Look at this. This is, what, this is what I'm talking about, guys. This is this is the engineering which I talk about. Have a look at this. Have a look at the design for in in this machine. I mean, it looks like a good bit of kit, right? Let's get out in the sunshine because <coughs> the shade doesn't know justice, right? But it's, to me, I've seen these machines go for 800 quid plus, right, with discounts of 400 pound, right? But look, look at the gap you get right in there. Look, see that gap, look. Yeah, it gets daylight in there. Same the other side, daylight. So all your grass is going out of there, unless the, unless the box is torn. Is the box torn? Let's have a look. Uh, right, okay, yeah, let's sort that out, because look, that, that's got to be over there, Paulie boy. That will help. Same the other side. That will help. There's still gap there, though. I bet you there's still gap. Right, let's try that. So I've just repaired the grass box as well. Let's just put that in. Sorry for moving the camera about you guys, but I'm sort of one-handed. Let's see if that's improved it. It's improved it a little tiny bit, not, but not a great deal. There is still... Let me put my, my microphone back up here. Oh, hello. There is still a very, very small gap. Just there, let's see if the grass can get out. And there, exactly the same. So it's, it's, a, it's a little things in life, to me, that... Um, that make all the difference. If you're spending six to eight hundred pounds for a mower, it should be right. Um, but there you go, that's what it is. Um, I'm happy that I was able to get this machine up and running. I will say it's been a little bit of labour of love for myself. It's not been the easiest of machines to work on. Um, but, you know, it's a lawn mower. Um, and it's not a bad mower. We've had a big Honda engine on there. Um, and, the, and the roller system is more complicated than what it needed to be. But all in all, it runs and it drives as it should. So there you have it, one feeder lawnmower, now all up, running, driving, do what it should do, Verita now works as well. Um, it's had all changed, new spark plug, pull cords, and all that sort of stuff, blade sharpen and balance, brand new roller fitted, uh, and the, the parts for that alone were um, 74 quid or 77 quid. As I say, it is from a company called, let me find it, I think it's here. But, um, yeah, uh, Mower, uh, Mo Direct, uh, UK leading garden machinery store. And they are in Barn Drop Limited in uh, Bedfordshire, apparently. That's where they're from. Um, so go and sort them out. Uh, I don't, I can't give you no cable um, numbers for them because the, 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 the diagrams for that are very different. So if you want any parts for this, let me know. I have actually got the, um, the parts diagram for it. You won't find it online, but I was very, very lucky to be given it by, by the company. So but don't hand it out to everyone, apparently, but I will hand it out to you. So there you go. Um, that's all done. And there you go, Paul. So now you've got your mother that your mate's giving you. Um, I wish him all the best. I really, really do. And uh, may you have many happy more years of mowing up and down your lawn and uh, thinking of your friend whilst you're doing so. So there you go. If you like this little episode of Mixed Mother Mower Man, hit the subscribe button and whack the old bell. Set notifications to all. That way you'll be told next time I upload another video. I look forward to this episode of Mixed Mother very, very soon. But until then, guys and girls, much more importantly.
Take it easy.